presence of God fills this place. That was a beautiful song. In fact, God is awesome. That, I remember that was actually the first song when I first preached at a Baptist church. First time preaching, and that was a song that we had. And so amazing. It just filled me with confidence that the Lord is here, that the Lord has a message for us. And so turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're looking at various places in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to start off 2 Corinthians 10, 1 to 5. In your pew Bibles, it's page 1801, 1801 in their pew Bibles. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold towards you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that they live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments with every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may you bless this time. Bless this message. Use it for your glory. Speak to us, O Lord. Allow for us to hear. Allow for us to listen. Allow for us to obey. Protect us from any distractions. Allow for us to hear and see what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before leaving on vacation... Pastor Jonathan gave me a theme to preach on, and that theme was loving learning. Loving learning. He said, it's perfect, Kendall, because graduation celebration is going to be on that day. Loving learning. Oh, it's a perfect message. And all the while, as he's telling me this, some feelings of inadequacy started to come into me. And so there's a couple inadequacies I want to share with you. The first one was... For myself, let me give you a brief testimony. Some of you know this testimony. Some of of you will be new. By age 11, I was kicked out of Iolani School. By age 15, I was kicked out of Hawaii Baptist Academy. And I ended up at Moanalua High School graduating. Moanalua, private public school. I could go both ways, public school. This is a little shame. I don't share this one often. It took me nine years for what should have been a four-year degree in my college years. And so you could imagine the feelings of inadequacy, of loving learning. Talk about loving learning. Man, that's one of my shortcomings, my big shortcomings, even to this day. Another inadequacy that cropped up, it seems small, but it was kind of actually big for me was coming up with a title for this message. And so I was playing around with loving being a learner or impacting the world, loving learning. I had the ABCs of loving learning. I had the humble learner, the strong and humble learner, whatever it was. It's it's like when you go to a big event and you keep on changing clothes and you don't know which one it is that you should wear. That's how I felt. And so it was a little awkward, a little weird, but that's the feelings I was going through. Another one that I realized is we need to pray for whoever is preaching because the very topic that you preach on is the very thing that Satan hits you the most. It's the things that he wants to distract you. He wants you to be discouraged. And I praise God for a godly wife, my wife, Joy. I don't know where you are, my wife. There you are. I praise God for a godly wife who reminds me that It's about God, who stops me in the midst of going crazy. Let's pray. And so it it was total distractions. I got to admit, there were total distractions, total attacks, feelings of discouragement, feelings that, who are you to even share this message that's going to happen today? 
Like, you are such a hypocrite. And here you go, sharing this message. But you know what? God's word put me into full confidence. God's word is that powerful. And it was this verse, a verse that stood out for me, that helped me to facilitate this message on being the strong and humble learner. 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And that was the message that God started to speak to me. And that phrase of loving learning became super clear. In your Bibles, I'm going to give context of what's happening in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In your Bibles, the header probably is Paul's defense of his ministry, or Paul defends his authority. And let me share what's going on in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So Paul is talking to the people of Corinth. He wrote a letter to them. And there are several people, in fact, leaders, who are not really glorifying God. They're doing things that are contrary to what Paul has done and worked for. And Paul is pointing these things out. So for example, Paul points out that the people, the leaders, are saying, Paul, yeah, he's bold when he writes to us. But when he's in person, he's not a very amazing preacher. In fact, he's pretty weak and he's timid when he's live and in person. But when he writes, he always tries to write bold and straight up to us. So this is what they were saying. Some other leaders, maybe the same, they're saying they're comparing themselves with other leaders around them. And they're puffing themselves up. They're making themselves look good. Like, look what I do over here. I'm able to do this. That guy, he can't do that. Or they're saying, look, I I can help serve better over here. And that leader, they're not as good as that. Look at me at what I'm doing. That's the attitude of some of the leaders that are in the church, the Corinthian church going on. And worst off, some of them were boasting about themselves. They were completely boasting about themselves, saying, look at my accomplishments without giving any credit to God. And this is what's happening in this church, and this is the context of what we're looking at over here. And as I'm reading this, I saw a key theme in this passage. The key theme is this. When God calls us, we have full authority to glorify him with our minds and our lives. Let me say that again. The key theme for this passage is when God calls us, we have the full authority to glorify him with our minds and our lives. What we say, what we do, what we think, all of that needs to point back to God. Who should be glorified? God. Every part of our lives needs to glorify God. The reality, though, for Christians is that we mess up. We fall short. And so the reality of what we, to, what we are to do is to be in complete, total surrender, to be humble, to be willing, to be yielding to whatever God wants us to do. Pastor Clive Cowell will be preaching in a few weeks from now. He's an amazing teacher and preacher. And one thing I got from him, my takeaway that I've carried on, is when Pastor Clive comes to church, any church he goes to, I'm assuming, but he was sharing about Kalihi Union Church. He stands right there at that doorway. He looks around, and he says, God, where do you want me to sit? Where do you want me to sit today? And so you want me to sit next to Pastor Kendall? But I see him throughout the week. Why do I need to sit? Why I talk to him all the time. Why do you want me to sit next to him? Or, God, you want me to sit to that new person so that I could meet them, so I could get to know them? All right, I I can do that. And I love that heart. That is exactly where each of us needs to be constantly, daily, moment by moment. God, what do you want me to do? God, where do you want me to go? God, do you want me to do this? God, is this the thing that I need to do? And it keeps us in check. It allows for us to be completely submissive unto the Lord and what God wants. And so to ask that question constantly in our lives is going to be so vital to being a humble learner. Today I have three points to being the humble learner. 
And so let's look at the first. The humble learner dutifully uses his or her mind for Christ's glory. The fill in the blank is all thoughts are to be captive and obedient to Christ. All thoughts are to be captive and obedient to Christ. Have you ever noticed that your mind wanders to places that it shouldn't go? I think we all face that. That there are things that we shouldn't be thinking of, things that just creeps in there, keeps on coming back. You know, this passage actually is clear about some of those things that are luring you away, that is pulling you away. Just in verses 1 through 4, 1 through 5, we see several things that's pulling you away, luring you away, so that your thoughts won't be captive and obedient to God. Here are a few of them. The devil. The devil's plan is totally to steal, kill, and destroy. He could steal. He, his desire is that he would be dead, that all of your joy is gone, that you are a disgrace and a discouragement. He accuses you. He accuses me. The devil is that horrible. And that's one of the things that lures us away. Strongholds in our life, that's in this passage. Strongholds lure us away. Things that have taken a grasp that don't glorify God. And we keep on coming back to it like a dog returning to its vomit. That we need to be rid of. There are other things in this passage. Pride, arguments, rebellious ideas, disobedience. It's all in this passage. And this is just to name a few. All of these things try to lure us away and try to steal our minds and not allow for us to take it captive. And so the Bible has an answer for that. God has an answer for that. To help us, we do not use worldly weapons in verse 4. We must use godly, mighty weapons. Let me say this clear. That there's nothing that is temporal and worldly that can go against these things. The only things that can fight this are godly weapons. With these godly weapons, we knock down the devil's strongholds. With these godly weapons, we break down arguments that keeps us from knowing God. With these godly weapons, we conquer rebellious ideas. With these godly weapons, we teach people to obey Christ every moment. So what are these godly weapons? Actually, this passage isn't clear. It doesn't give specific. But I would guess, according to the theme of Paul, godly weapons are things that are eternal. Eternal compared to those things that are temporal. Nothing temporal will, will last. The things that are eternal will be forever. So therefore, godly weapons that are eternal is prayer. Prayer. Prayer is our communication with God, our direct line in which we're speaking to him. A godly weapon is his word in which he speaks to us, and his word will be forever. A godly weapon that's eternal is a Holy Spirit that dwells within those who are believers to guide and to give purpose and hope and plans. These are the godly weapons that we need to rely on every moment. That is the only way to fight all of these things that try to pull you away. I feel led to share the gospel because, like I said, the enemy is trying to pull people away all the time. And it is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It is only through him that he died for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again, and that he, will re he ascended and that he will return. When we ask Jesus, Jesus, I acknowledge my sin. I know that I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know that you died on the cross for my sin. Jesus, I need you to help me to direct my life. I want to follow you. It's hard. Life is hard. But I know that in following you, you provide hope. You provide Security, you provide everything that I would ever need. When you pray a prayer like that from your heart, you are changed and transformed. And that's where it begins. That's where it starts. And so may we 
have godly weapons that fight against all these distractions that are trying to lure us away and take our minds captive. The application question. In your notes are application questions, and here's a side note to that. I want you to take home these application questions. And I want you to put it somewhere, in, whether in your Bible or somewhere where you're going to read it. And I want you to read it and to dwell on it, to meditate it, to ruminate. My wife taught me that word. Ruminate upon it. To be able to chew on it. Because these application questions are the very means for us to start getting closer to God. And so the first application question is this. What current situations or thoughts in your life right now need to be under the submission and obedience of Christ? What are the situation and the thoughts that need to be submitted in obedience to Christ? And think about that, but think about it throughout this week. Surrender it to God. Take your thoughts captive and live in obedience for Jesus. Point number two, the humble learner equips and builds people up. The fill in the blank is build up rather than pull down. Simple as that. Build up rather than pull down. 2 Corinthians 10, 7, 8 reads this. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for the building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. Paul is super clear right here that we need to build one another up. Our goal should be to build the body of believers up, not to tear us down, to have edification rather than destruction, to help rather than to hurt. What we do with all that we know, all that we have experienced, all that we have gained, it is so important what we do with it, and we need to do it well. You see, I could imagine that each of us, all of us, have come into encounters in which there have been people who tear you down. It's guaranteed. Because we live in a sinful world, we are sinners, but by God's grace, we are saved. But there is constant tearing down. And even within the church, there are examples of tearing down. I, because I was doing this message, I was more observant and see, I saw how even words that we say, actions that are done, even mannerisms, the way we do things, sometimes they, they start to tear people down. I'm guilty of it. You may be guilty of it. But God is very clear that we are to build up rather than to tear down. That's bad examples of that. But let's look to good examples. I remember one of my professors. His name was Dr. Hines. Dr. Hines, he was a hard grader. In fact, I don't think anyone got A's in his class, especially not me. But no one got A's. He was hard to grade. But Dr. Hines, he said this quote that stuck with me. He said before taking a test, I don't test you to see you fail. I test you to see you succeed. And so whenever we would have a test, he would say that. I don't test you to see you fail. I test you to see you succeed. And Dr. Hines, he called in some Greek word. The Greek word was dokimazo. And that very word, dokimazo, and I don't know Greek. I, I didn't study it. I'm not a good student, remember? But anyway, <laughs> it says, dokimazo means to put to a test, to prove, to examine, to distinguish, and after testing, you are fit. That's dokimazo. And Dr. Hines would talk about that. He would say, I test you to succeed. And so instead of tearing people down, tearing ourselves down, we need to build up, build one another up. The application question is this. How do you intentionally build people around you up? Here's a tough question. 
When is it right to show tough love by demanding someone change? And how do they know that you are acting in love? That's your application questions in your notes. And so may we be a people, a humble learner that builds up rather than tears down. The third point is the humble learner seeks always to give glory to God. The fill in the blank is credit goes to the Lord. All credit goes to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 15 to 17 reads this. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. For we do not want to boast about the work already done in someone else's territory, but let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. God's word calls us to give credit, all glory unto God. Paul is, in fact, rebuking the Corinthian Christians, saying that if you find glory either in Paul or in cutting Paul down, that's not what it's about. It's not about any man. It's about giving glory unto God. Give all credit unto him. Can I go back to the Iolani HBA thing? So a lot of people have heard the Iolani HBA thing from my own personal life. And it always gets mixed up because people stay on that. Like, whoa, you got kicked out of Iolani? Whoa, HBA too? Whoa, what did you do? It's academics, by the way. And so <laughs> I look back at that stuff, and no credit to me. No credit. I want to make that clear. But here I am standing today as a minister, as a youth worker in a church. If I were to go back to my youth self, there, was, there would be no way that my youth self would think of that, even imagine that. There is no way that my youth self would think, man, you're going to be able to share the gospel, you're going to be able to preach, you're going to be able to do this and go this place and that. There's no way. And once again, the credit doesn't go to me. There's all the credit has to go back to God. So when I share about Iolani or HBA, and I freely share about those things because I'm just so free-flowing with that, it's the testimony that God is good, that there is nothing on my own that I could have done and continue to do. It's all about God. And that's your testimony. You face things. You've gone through things. You've gone through trials harder than being kicked out of any school. You face things that are difficult. You are different from where you were. So look back at that and think, who brought you there? Who brought you out? Who continues to bring you out? Who will continue to use it in amazing ways that we don't even know yet? God. God is that good. He can change and transform lives. And he continues to do so. And he will be glorified in all things. So may we be reminded that the credit never, ever, ever should go to us. It should always go back to God. Sometimes in pridefulness, when we've learned something and do it well, we want to tell others to be recognized. But it is so much better to give praises to God. No one is so high that they cannot give glory to God. No one is so low that they cannot give glory to God. Everyone can give glory to God in whatever thing that you have in your life. And that's the awesomeness of him. And God's word tells us to do that as well. If you have anything to boast about, boast in the Lord. The application question, how and why does your prideful attitude come up? And what can be done about it? How and why? What are those triggers? And what can be done so that you can start giving credit to God, even in the midst of whatever it is? Let me wrap it up in our conclusion. 
where Paul was a strong and humble leader. I want to be a strong and humble learner. I know my faults. I know I was kicked out of these schools. I know I'm slow in academics. But by God's grace, we can move forward. I know that my mind may wander, think of things that are bad, but may my mind focus that all my thoughts are captive and obedient to Christ. I know that sometimes, especially in pride or anger, I try to belittle those who are around me, but may we be unto those around us ready to build up rather than tear down. I know that when I think that all eyes are on me and in selfishness I want to be acknowledged for what I've done, but may my eyes and my heart look to Jesus. May I see that he's the only one that deserves glory and that all the credit needs to go to him. On this day, choose to be a strong and humble learner. You need to choose it. You need to take action. And where, when all is said and done, when our lives are focused on magnifying the wonderful, beautiful name of Jesus, we realize that's what it's all about. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbled because of how magnificent and awesome and great you are. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times in which we have sinned against you. Forgive us for those times in which we have stolen glory from you. Forgive us, O oh Lord, so that we may step into your presence and see that you have given us full authority to be able to give you glory. Help us to do that this day. Help us to choose you in our lives. Help us to acknowledge the areas we fall short and to take the steps forward so that you will be glorified. We thank you, God, for being our great and awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aloha, my name is Jonathan Steeper. I'm the senior pastor at Kalihinian Church. I'd like to welcome you to come and visit us. We are a family where we hope you'll meet and hear God and develop relationships with his people. Please come and join us at any of our Sunday services, our weekly gatherings, or our many special events. We look forward to meeting you and growing in faith, hope, and love together. Mahalo, and may God bless you.